Hey, what's up, guys? Today's episode, we're talking about a living legend, someone that I'd be starstruck to meet. One, Travis Pastrana, number 199, appropriate for episode 199. Uh, this is a great story. Very, uh, I, I mean, what what can't you say about Travis Pastrana? He's done it all. He's a living legend. So without further ado, episode 199, Travis Pastrana. The only panel I got to get to is under a microscope. I'm a scientist. I love preparing slides. I love preparing slides. The it's goop. Petri, the little, little dishes. Goop. Yeah, little no. Petri dish. You're a Petri dish head. My mouth feels <laughs> like a Petri dish right now. I forgot to brush my teeth this morning. Ew. I was on a call with Christina yesterday, and then I was in the room with Jesse, and I stood up, and I was like, man, I bet my breast stinks. And Jesse goes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> that guy does not mince words. No, he, he doesn't does mince words. Well, he didn't tell me. I brought it up myself, and he did not <laughs> disagree. <laughs> and later on in bed, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, Robert Downey Jr. never experiences stuff like that. He's never low key embarrassed. Like he didn't cripple he's me. He's sponsored or by uh, Orbit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, like if Robert Downey Jr. stood up on a call and was like, "Hey, my breast stinks," everyone would be like, "No, RDJ." No, it doesn't smells like smell. roses. It smells like freaking. What he is would, that? He would mint? tell everybody else in the call that their breast stinks. Too. Everybody, everybody else's breath stinks. Yeah. Mm. People would, you know, shove dirt in their mouth just to be stinkier than RDJ. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream, inciting riots and making people shove dirt in their mouths. <laughs> just so Great. they don't offend you. Welcome to Pass Gas. Welcome to the show. Okay. <laughs> It's the 2006 X Games in Los Angeles. The Staples Center, not Crypto.com Arena, is a buzz, ready to watch competitors face off in a festival favorite event, the Motocross Best Trick. X Games favorite 23 year old Travis Pastrana gets himself ready to run his first trick, the Super Flip, a backflip with a Superman for good measure. Ooh. But his score isn't good enough to propel him to first. In fact, he's sitting in third place. A few years ago, this would have been unheard of. With his fearlessness, Travis Pastrana helped put freestyle on the map. But now others have come to replace him. If he wants to win the gold and cement his freestyle dominance, he's gonna have to pull off something even bigger. Something no one has ever done before. A double backflip. This trick is the culmination of Travis's entire career so far. And if he can land this trick, he'll be the undisputed king of the cross. But if he doesn't make the jump, he could end up paying with his life. How did Travis Pastrana become the modern day Evil Knievel? What did he do to revolutionize freestyle motocross? How did this motorcycle prodigy become an action sport legend? Well, today on Past Gas's 199th episode, oh, wow. it's the story of number 199 himself, Travis Pastrana. Past Gas. Big thank you to our sponsor this week, Valvoline Motor Oil. Valvoline Extended Protection Full Synthetic High Mileage is Valvoline's best performing motor oil ever for engines with more than 75,000 miles. If you've got a car with more than 75,000 miles, you need Valvoline in your car today. Thank you so much, Valvoline. Thank you so much to Indeed for sponsoring this episode. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash past gas. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash past gas. Just go to Indeed.com slash past gas and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash past gas. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you so much, Indeed. Big thanks to Chime for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. Your credit's a big deal, so build up yours with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash gas. That's Chime.com slash gas. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. 
a lot of people I've heard the modern day Evil Knievel a lot with Travis Pastrana. I think that's selling him like pretty short. Pretty sh- yeah, yeah. Like, Evil Knievel was kind of well, d- one very well documented jerk. Yeah, mm-hmm. huge and jerk. Two, uh, con man and fraud. And Travis Pastrana is <laughs> like an amazing businessman, mm-hmm. salt of the earth by all accounts, very nice person. Multifaceted, very professional mm-hmm. guy who's super talented and awesome. Mm-hmm. Evil Knievel is a whatever. The He's only thing close freak. to Superman Evil Knievel ever did was fall off his horse. Nice. <laughs> also, yeah, if you- Travis Pastrana puts freestyle on the map, what is this? Oh, Nolan's and over there. Joe's over here. I'm over here, and we're talking on the podcast. It's, we are welcome That's to the, the show. That's the freestyle king, dude. We're going to be talking about the day. <laughs> that was pretty good. We could, <laughs> yeah. Let's just do that That's the for freestyle the next king, hour, dude. yeah. We're going to be talking about the day that Travis Pastrana de-seated Jesus as king of the cross. Yeah, I did read that and was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> Travis uh, Pastrana de-seated <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to watch some butthead and beavis. <laughs> nice, dude. Sick. Uh-huh. I remember you guys only used to freestyle. Only thing is only mics in between us. <laughs> When I first started at Donut, we all sat at a table together, and Nolan would read the, oh, the yeah. rhyming uh, dictionary, dictionary yeah, yeah. and uh, just yeah. freestyle off of that, and it yeah. was so fun. It's I was not. Like, I mean, it's not really. It's not freestyling. Yeah, I'm just reading. No, you just no, you filled the filled in uh, the uh, blanks. No, you just, no, read, I just it read it straight up. You just put on oh, all really? you do is put, yeah. like put on an indie hip hop beat. Yeah. <laughs> and like then you search boom, just <laughs> boom bap on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. like Joey badass type beat, and then just go to the rhyming.com, and you'll sound awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did you not phone them. Impress your though. friends. I'm not that talented. Uh, and I yeah. was like, oh, man, this is my first week. Yeah. I can get used to this. <laughs> I can get used to this. These guys are cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy reads off the internet. <laughs> 88 glam, ash ram, ab cam. Ab nam, ab bram, ab gram, a cram. Ab lam, ab dram, ab bram, a bam. Ab ram, ab cam, ash ram, a sam, am. Ab gram, ab gram. But tram, but jam, but cam, but dam, but lamb, but jam, but cram, blood clam, but cram, but jam. Blood clam? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's a blood clam? Door jam, <laughs> Amsterdam, Abraham, Aerogram, Aerogram, Allegram. You're, you're just reading all the one syllable. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm off the three. All right. Yo, yo, oh. yo, oh. I'm off the dopamine. Sitting in a theme with the beeline, bean, green, benzene, between the okay, black beans. now you're beans. filling in words. You're not doing the joke. No, no, no. It's a two-syllable one. <laughs> <laughs> just read the two-syllable words. Anyway, that's how you freestyle uh, rap. That's how you freestyle yeah, rap. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Snapping. <laughs> Sheena yeah. Kings of Freestyle. That's called hip-hop. Favorite rappers. Mac Miller. Uh-oh. Eminem. Macklemore. <laughs> this, this site says bathing machine is a four-syllable rhyme. For dopamine. Oh, dude, damn, that's dude. a real slant. Rhyme, dopamine bathing machine. Your girl's a bathing. What is machine. a bathing machine? <laughs> sure, it's what your girl is for my dong. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to Pass Gas, everybody. We are, we are the figurative your girl, not yeah, Joe's girl. The, the figurative your, your girl. girl, as in. You're everybody's girl. Listen, I don't want to disrespect Joe. I want to disrespect No, no, I get everybody. it. It's a classic rap format. Your girl is a bathing machine from a dong. <laughs> and this week, uh, we are not... Hitting my balls we back might. and forth like ping pong. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> why, I think... you, why is that a <laughs> <laughs> Some people might... Uh, that, might that might be their kink. Yeah. And just bathing it. <laughs> <laughs> real, wow. Smooth as like eggs. Mm-hmm. Bathing <laughs> machine. I need to do this to own my friends. <laughs> I need to disrespect a man. They're gonna be so pissed. <laughs> Bathing machine. <laughs> the figurative your girl. <laughs> All right. So uh, maybe in episode two hundred we'll transition fully to a, a freestyle rap show. But today I we are talking. Go back. We are talking about Travis Pastrana. Uh, actually. This was inspired by one of you guys out there, Mike Cantrell. Uh, he wrote us a letter last June. Someone's on the roof of Someone's our studio. Someone's on the roof. Guys, listen. If you get hear, off, hey, isn't that one of your catchphrases? Get off my roof! <laughs> you get down from there. <laughs> if you guys hear gunshots and tons of karate, just know that we are defending our lair from whoever the crap is up there. 
That was weird. I would imagine a fight like that, just a lot of crowdy noises and then one gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> no noises. <laughs> well, I've I've taken a vow that if I ever kill a bunch of people with karate, <laughs> I gotta end it. <laughs> oh, wow. so it, okay, it's different yeah. than yeah. Uh, it's just like <laughs> yeah. Oh ah! no! <laughs> Very little hesitation. Anyway, Mike Cantrell wrote us last June with an email, and he ended that email with, quote, I've noticed y'all have started numbering the podcast on Spotify. If number, if episode number 199 isn't a Travis Pastrana episode, that'll be a huge missed opportunity, and what? you guys suck. Yeah, I remember that. He said that? He didn't say the blast part. I, I oh, okay, that. good. Uh, so, so I was about to freestyle so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we we took that Mike very seriously Cantrell, and marked it. You're not Pharrell. You can't spell. Go to hell. You I smell. Got, dang. <laughs> I got half a mind to freestyle on your ass. <laughs> I got half a mind to freestyle on your ass. <laughs> it's like the inciting incident of the worst movie in 1988. <laughs> Anyways, that's James. I'm James the Dump Truck Pumphrey. My name's Nolan, and that's Joe. I'm Joe. Weber. Hey. 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 Right, we got a lot to get to this week. Travis Ostrano, one of, uh, I think I'd be starstruck if I met him. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we have a pretty good chance of meeting him. I know. That's what I'm I think he'd be chill. Dude, he'd be chill as hell. Oh, he'd be chill, I could yeah. see being super nervous. Well, I wouldn't be nervous, but I could see you being nervous to meet him. I'd give him a yeah. fat old dap. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah dude. And then he'd be like, oh, uh, I broke like, my hand 75 times. Be like, oh, <laughs> he would? Because yeah. he's brittle because he broke some. No, he's not brittle. He just, he's you just know, strong. He's broken doing all his double arms. backflips 80 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah, so we'd get brittle. along. I'd call him Pastrami. Yeah. I'm sure you've <laughs> never heard that before. I'd call him Travi Pastrami. Yo, Travi Past. Travi Pasta. He's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You want to come over? <laughs> Travis Pastrana <laughs> was born on October 8th, 1983, the only child of Robert and Debbie Pastrana. Imagine your only child doing this. <laughs> I know. <kind> of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't even have a backup track. <laughs> You're it. Robert and Debbie settled in Annapolis, Maryland. That's where my dad's from. Yeah. Due to a military assignment and never really planned to have children. But when Travis came out along... <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> when Travis dropped? <laughs> but when Travis dropped, that changed. <laughs> and, and Travis became the center of their world. Family meant everything to young Travis. Robert owned a construction business with his brothers, probably built ramps. So Travis <laughs> was always near family. And they were a fun one. His father had been a drill sergeant in the Marines and had an intense yet warm personality. Mm. Travis's uncles were all athletes, and his cousins were athletes too. His entire family was competitive and consistently one-upped each other to see who could do the next best thing. I bet you can't eat, like, five rolls at Thanksgiving. Yeah. I bet you're you, on. I bet, I bet you can't put a whole container of Old Bay on that crab. <laughs> I bet you can't do a backflip than a Superman on a dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> but Travis looked up to his dad the most. He says, quote, As a kid, when everyone says that their dad's the craziest, their dad's the toughest, well... My dad really is. Oh. Hmm. And Robert passed that trait along to his son. From a young age, Travis was fearless. Quote, I wasn't strong enough or fast enough physically to hang with my cousins and my uncles. They're so fast. They are so <laughs> fast and so physical. Muscular like a guy from Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> I was younger and a little smaller. A little bit of a runt. So I used fear to be able to win. And that's how I still operate. Oh. Really? <laughs> After seeing his young son's penchant for adventure, Robert gave Travis a red and white Yamaha PW50 for Christmas. At four years old, Travis had been given the greatest gift of his life. But no one realized it yet. I bet his dad did. Four years old, a dirt bike. Pretty yeah. good chance that's the best gift you've ever gotten. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But until then, it's just blocks. <laughs> <laughs> or books. P. 
P-U. You know what's gross? Libraries. They're gross. Yeah, I saw a little library, one of those little houses that they put outside of houses. Oh, okay. And I was like, dude, like you just get that. Yeah. And then you're like touching it. Sure. And like, you know where people read? The turlet. Yeah. You know when you wash your hand before you touch a book? No, you don't, because no. no one does. There's poo poos all over that. So There's imagine poo poos entire... all, all over your phone. My poo poos. <laughs> all I'm saying is, let's boycott libraries. Uh, no, cut no, the funding no, no, for libraries no. and put them into something fun. I think those books outside think, get sanitized by the sunlight. I think we can all agree that books are bad, and we should get rid of them. Sure. That's what we want to say. We got phones now. <laughs> you can look at your phone with the poops. <laughs> got games. All right. Travis loved his dirt bike so much that he soon wanted to start racing. But the only competitive motocross races for his age group were down in Florida, a 14-hour drive from the family's Maryland home. Ugh. Robert they hate books in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Robert and Debbie decided they would support their son this way, too. When Travis was in elementary school, his father would pick him up after school on Friday drive through the night to the racetracks in Florida, sign them up for the Saturday races, work through the night on the bike, race Travis on Sunday, then drive them back to Maryland where they'd get home early in the morning on Monday, all because Travis wanted to race. That's nice. That's his supportive dad. That's crazy dad. that there's nothing for them more northern yeah, than that. Yeah, go to South Carolina. There's got to be something. This could have created a sense of obligation for the young racer, but Travis's parents made it clear that the results weren't the driving factor. Quote, They said, look... You, I don't know. I'm not like Travis is a guy. Like I said, we're probably gonna meet. So mm -hmm. I don't want to try and do don't him. Do a voice. Right. But I'm. I want to do a voice because I'm gonna get bored if I don't. Okay. So this isn't Travis. This, this is not isn't how Travis. Travis. Sounds. But I think it's kind of like an air of Travis. Sure. Yeah. You okay. know, like a really cool. This guy. is like John Krasinski playing Travis in a movie. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. They said, look, <laughs> you have to want to do this, and if you don't want to do it. Don't feel any pressure from us. But Travis loved to race, so his parents made it happen. Buying motorbikes is an expensive habit, though, and the cost of racing increased. His parents remortgaged their home multiple times to financially support their son through his motocross career. Wow. And when money got tight, his uncles chipped in to help with their speed and physicality. <laughs> They're fast yeah. and strong. I got my money in quicker. <laughs> with Travis's parents putting in serious financial backing, they made sure he was committed as well. Quote, As a third grader, it was a big choice. Travis said, My dad told me, you have to go and run one mile a day before school. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if it's freaking raining, cold, or hot. If you do that all through your school year in the third grade, then we will figure out a way to get you down to Florida. And I was like, What's a mile? <laughs> and he was like, it's a distance of land. And I go, great. I'm in. Of course. <laughs> Travis must have been pretty good for his family to believe in this dream, right? Well, not exactly. At least, he didn't start out that way. In his first race in the 51cc stock class, he barely finished 20th. And he didn't fare better in his next runs. But... Travis's parents continued to invest in him because they figured that making money from motocross was a fantasy. They told Travis to enjoy his time while he could because sooner or later he'd probably be in the military what? like his father before him or working in the family construction company. That sounds like a dire straight, mm -hmm. but it sounds like his family's like relatively well off. It's not like you're going to be in the military no, or work like, in construction. No, it's like following your father's yeah, footsteps. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Not, not goodwill hunting situation. It's more like, no. hey, you know, if this doesn't work out, yeah. you have a family business you that you can take like over. Dad. Yeah. yeah, that right. makes sense. Yeah, And then you'll be running a lot of miles, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the time Travis was nine, he was committed to racing full-time on the weekends. Fortunately, he was starting to get attention from sponsors and worked his way up the ranks with Suzuki's junior program. Oh. That seems like a pretty big freaking That's great. deal. Yeah. In middle school, Travis was already an amateur champion and then went on to win five amateur championship titles before he went pro at just 16 years old. Oh, my God. But before he could live out every kid's motocross dreams, he would discover freestyle. Freestyle. It's like a buzz buzz. It's a beat style. <laughs> Give me that, honey. I'm making money. You think I'm funny? Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't scat. I'm more P-style. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty Yeah. 
Pretty good. <laughs> Sitting that on the great. toilet, hot snakes. It's a freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I call it me style. Grease greasy. I got the please bleasy make it looking easy. I got the Hershey squirts. My tummy hurts. <laughs> my tummy hurts because my dog made me wear a skirt. <laughs> My dog's like, you're going to put this on when you go to work. <laughs> I said, can I just wear some pants and a shirt? He said, burk, burk, burk. <laughs> burk, burk, dog, burk. <laughs> That's my dog, dude. Burk. That's how my dog talks to me. Burk, burk, dog. Burk, 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 dog. Hey. <laughs> I'm like, you're the dog. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode of Past Gas. I'm so bad at remembering what I subscribe to. Sometimes I look at my debit card statement and realize that I've been paying for stuff that I haven't even used in months. It sucks. But there is good news. Rocket Money can help you out. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions, and they might not even remember subscribing to half of those. If you have no idea just how much you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. It's a great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money is going. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. When you're signed up for so many things like streaming services, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. So stop wasting money on things you don't use, cancel your unwanted subscriptions, and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash gas. That's rocketmoney.com slash gas. Rocketmoney.com slash gas. Thanks, Rocket Money. Big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode of Past Gas. There's been many a time when I was just uncertain about my future. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. No one's going to give you a playbook for how to live life. You have to figure it out yourself, and it's confusing a lot. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Honestly, you got to start living life for yourself. Don't worry about what other people think of you or what your parents want for you. I didn't really know that until I started taking therapy, and I think the best way to get into therapy is BetterHelp. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is just fill out a brief questionnaire and and you get matched with a therapist. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash pastgas today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash pastgas. Thank you, BetterHelp. Big thanks to Chime for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. I first learned about credit score when I wanted to buy a car that I had to finance and I realized too late that I needed good credit. But if you're thinking about building credit, I think Chime is the best way to get into it. You may think your credit score is no big deal, but if you're dealing with a low credit score or no credit score at all, that could be a problem for your future financial goals. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started. What's cool about the Chime checking account is that you get paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. And you can ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. And you get access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with $200 qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash gas. That's Chime.com slash gas. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank N.A., member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. In the mid-90s, freestyle motocross was a fad popularized by the Krusty Demons, a collection (laughs) of action sport daredevils whose escapades were captured in the 1995 film Krusty Demons of Dirt. I remember this one. I mean, yeah. A collective of action sport daredevil, like these guys were dudes that were just like sending it anywhere yeah. they could. I mean, if you're into motocross at all, you've definitely seen these films right here. Yeah, yeah. these films emphasizing big jumps and tricks over racing. This movie showcased the raw, adventurous mentality of freestyle motocross. Just dudes hooking it, they were wearing hawking it. cooler clothes than average. Hucking it was sending it before sending it was. That's true, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I say hucking it. Yeah. Without realizing it, Travis had been called towards freestyle. He said, quote, My whole life I was kind of groomed to be a racer. 
but I always liked jumping. Jump around. So I would go the slowest way around a track just to hit the biggest jumps. My dad was always so confused. <laughs> He's like, you didn't have to do that jump, and you crashed. And I was like, yeah, but wasn't it cool? Oh <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> Shoot his dad? <laughs> that was a bullwhip. I see. He whipped his dad around his ankle and pulled him oh. just to embarrass him in front of his mom. <laughs> The exploits of the Krusty crew inspired Travis to link up with them. Soon, 13-year-old Travis was messing around with new tricks on the back hills of Maryland, taking on bigger jumps, falling, and getting back up again. And he was having the time of his life doing it. But his sponsors, his sponsors weren't too excited about it. Mm -hmm. Freestyle was not only unprofitable, it was dangerous. The whole goal of freestyle was to one-up the last guy, and that came with a level of risk Suzuki just couldn't improve of. They didn't want their star pupil hurting himself doing no. these jumps yeah. with these crusty guys. Yeah, a lot yeah. of like uh, athletes crusty. and F1 drivers and stuff mm. have stuff in their contracts where they're like not allowed to ride horses, yeah. you can't ride dirt bikes, yeah. can't race yeah. and stuff. Because we need you to be a speedy champion of dirt and not a crusty devil of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt your body, because it belongs to us now. As soon as their teenage star had found freestyle, Suzuki tried to shut it down. This was heartbreaking to Travis, who felt like he had just discovered motorcycles all over again. Luckily for Travis, his parents were there to support him. If Travis loved doing freestyle, they were going to make sure that he got to keep doing it. As Debbie Pastrana recalled, In the Suzuki contract, they said no freestyle. And we would not sign the contract. We said, he's our kid. We can tell him there's no freestyle. But you will not tell him there's no freestyle. Because <laughs> you are not his mom. You are not I his mom. I am his mom. I'm his mom. Is your name Debbie Pastrana? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your ID then. <laughs> oh, well. That's a weird coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, uh, I was talking about Abel Ferrara, uh, uh, the RX-7, or like rotary legend mm -hmm, in SoCal. Mm -hmm. And one of the, uh, Mike, who's working with us, was like, I grew up with an Abel Ibarra. Ibarra. Abel Ibarra. And he was like, is it? And I was like, there's no way there's two of Abel Ibarras, but ter turns out there's two of them. Dude, there's another James Pumphrey, and he runs the Humane Society in, like, Michigan or <laughs> oh, something. Cool. And that dude gets so much more press than me. <laughs> <laughs> My Google alerts are just always like, boom, 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 boom. We like, got to start a yeah. Humane Society out here. I know. we got, They have, I would, dude, I don't want to, <laughs> I do not want We to. can do it in your backyard. I don't want to touch gross dogs. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I said it. I don't want to read books and I don't want to touch gross dog. <laughs> All right? That bet on yourself mentality paid off for Travis and his family. At 14 years old, he entered the first World Freestyle Championship, a chance for him and everybody freestyler to show off what this new sport had to offer. Even as older, more experienced guys ran the course. Oh, I'm going to say what the trick is, and then, Joe, you're yeah. going to say yes. what it is. All right? Travis carried himself like a pro, landing cliffhangers. That's when the rider hangs off his bike by his feet. Okay. Heel clicks. <laughs> Reaching his feet over the front of the bar and clicking them together, then moving them back behind him. Oh, that's <laughs> sick. The crowd loved him. Even the broadcasters commented on how much fun Travis was having. That sounds like a normal thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> on his last ride, Travis attempted a no-handed landing, but tumbled over himself. The crowd didn't even have time to hold their collective breath before Travis popped up into the air, hands above his head, triumphant. Despite his fall, his score was enough to propel him to the win. Freestyle had a new poster child, uh -huh. and he wore number 199. Nice. It's it like this is episode 199. There it is. Even though Travis loved freestyle, there were stark reminders at every turn of the danger it posed. Travis had gotten hurt before, but he had an almost preternatural ability to get back up. Maybe it was his love of throwing himself through the air at high speeds. Maybe it was the luck that kept him going. But in 1999, at the age of 15, he'd endure an injury so big, it was a miracle he made it through it at all. Travis was competing in a freestyle event at Lake Havasu, I love Arizona. Havasu, oh, nice. dude. Jump over Havasu. my pontoon boat. <laughs> dude, do you want a claw? We got the London Bridge here for some reason. <laughs> 
I'm taking a freaking wave runner to work. Dude, we gotta be friends back at ASU. <laughs> when I first met you, dude, I wanna be honest. I hated you. <laughs> but now that I know your dad's got a sick boat. <laughs> dude, your brother's okay. for life. Anyway, <laughs> at least have the freestyle and leg obviously. But during his second run on the track, he lands short. He went from flying through the air at 60 miles per hour to stopping on a dime. The force of his crash dislocated his spine from his pelvis. No. Travis bled out two-thirds of his blood over the next several days and had to be placed in a medically induced coma for 10. This oh was a God. serious injury for a teenager that led his mother to question his commitment to the sport. But to Travis, it was just another day at the house. I don't think no, so. That was a bad, a bad day. day at work. That's a bad day. That was at work. a bad day yeah. at work. I like sprained my ankle once at work, and I was like. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to wipe for you. <laughs> you really blew that out of proportion. We yeah. had to feed you. We, we had to carry you. I made you guys toilet. hold a candlelight vigil. Yeah, we had, yeah. It's like, Joe, you're still alive. <laughs> you were holding a candle, too. <laughs> it was weird. Anyway, yeah, Travis. We made merch. <laughs> Travis recalls Rest in peace, Joe's non-sprained ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Travis recalls his first memories of the crash. Quote, When I woke up, my mom's like, Please, tell me this is it. I'm 15 years old, and at that moment I said, Mom, this is what I love. Is that jump still there? I want to try it again. <laughs> I know what I did wrong. I fell, and I dislocated my spine <laughs> from my pelvis. I'm not going to do that this time. <laughs> Even though he wasn't sure if he'd be walking again, let alone getting back on that bike, riding was the only thing on his mind. And with a passion like that, his parents couldn't tell him to stop. In 1999, six months after separating the lower half of his body from the top half, Travis competed in his first X Games. The popular action sports series was still pretty new, but... For its fourth year, they added freestyle to its slate, and there was no way that Travis was going to miss it. They needed something to fill in the slot that Street Luge yeah. left. Dude, I bet so big on Street Luge. <laughs> <laughs> All my money's tied up in Street Luge All right now. All my money is still tied up in Street Luge. Oh, it's about to be freed up. It's about to be freed up. I just have five more years. We're going to IPO. We're going to IPO. Mm, please, can we bring it back? Can we bring it back? <laughs> I need a weird skinny guy with dreadlocks to ride this yeah. street luge. Are there down any? The street oh no, his, his dreadlocks got stuck in his wheels. I need. That's what happened. To, it's all. That's what always happens. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If you're a weird skinny guy out there who's ridden street luge or at least has like a full leather suit and gloves and, and loves dreadlocks. Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ideally, you have like an eyebrow piercing. You still drink Sobe. You somehow. drink if you <laughs> love Sobe. The pink milk Sobe. <laughs> yeah, the pink milk Sobe, or that drink that's kind of gel and has the beads in it. Not both. Orbits. Orbits. <laughs> yeah, right. we were just we're, talking about that. If you love Orbits, we're sponsored by Orbits. We're gonna fire back the factory back up. Uh, Dan Cortez is investing. Please hit me up at Lose Dice Skull. Dot <laughs> hell hat dog at donutmedia.com. Travis riding his signature two stroke Suzuki RM 125 won gold. And for good measure, he rode his bike off a jump, a big old ramp into the San Francisco yeah. Bay in front of an adoring crowd. And An iconic yeah. X Games moment. And they hated it. Didn't they like they did punish not, him? They were, yeah, yeah, they did. They spanked him. They, yeah. yeah they said, this is not going to look good on TV. <laughs> <laughs> All of that happened before Travis even turned 16 years old. And the notion that Travis wouldn't make it as a professional athlete left the scenario faster than my dad <laughs> in 1993 and then again in 1996 and then again in 2007. For the Y2K motocross season, Travis signed with Suzuki's professional team, led by team manager Roger DeCoster. <laughs> Roger didn't like the idea of hiring this freestyle 16-year-old who had never raced pro, especially after Travis dislocated his shoulder right before the start of the season, trying to perform a knack-knack. That's where a rider swings one of their legs behind them to the other side of the bike, then brings it back just before landing. 
Uh, he did this on Letterman. Stupid human trick. Wow. He did this on. Right? Uh, wow, look at that. On Letterman. <laughs> 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 what is it? We'll be right back. <laughs> Another big thank you to our longtime sponsor of the show, Valvoline Motor Oil. You know what? They said, Nolan, you got to tell the people about Valvoline Extended Protection Full Synthetic High Mileage Oil. And I said, why? And they said, well, it's Valvoline's best performing motor oil ever for engines of more than 75,000 miles. And I said, wow, that's great because you know what? My car, Justin's car, Zach Job's car, Jerry's car, James's car, they all have 75,000 miles or more. So this sounds like the oil we need in our car. And they said, yeah, that's right. If you've got an older car with more than 75,000 miles, you need Valvoline Extended Protection Full Synthetic in your motor today. Older cars need a motor oil that can handle the demands of aging engines. Once an engine passes that 75K milestone, the effects of wear, friction, heat, and deposits, they start to show. And if your engine's not properly protected, they can wear down. And this leads to reduced gas mileage, lower horsepower output, and worst of all, <gasps> a shorter engine life. So don't be a clown. Get Valvoline Extended Protection Full Synthetic High Mileage in your car today. Valvoline. Big thank you to longtime sponsor of Past Gas. It's Indeed. That's right. If you're hiring for your business on your own, you're basically doing it on hard mode, okay? I'm talking like playing Dirt Rally with no assists on. It's hard, okay? But all you got to do is what I do when I'm playing really hard games. You need to breathe, take it easy, and keep it simple, okay? If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Here's why. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed streamlines hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. I want to tell you guys today about Indeed's hiring platform. Candidates you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to US Indeed data. And Indeed does the hard work for you. Indeed shows you the candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so you can hire faster. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash past gas. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash past gas. Just go to Indeed.com slash past gas and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash past gas. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. But Travis assured his new manager and promised that he would still be able to race. Sure enough, Travis competed and took the championship title in the 125 Motocross Series. Despite his freestyle prejudices, DeCosta couldn't deny that Travis was the real deal. This please, if you have a drink, please use DeCosta. <laughs> this is really nice, Wood. Please just grab the, the coster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's the icy drink. I can say the coster. You put, put it on the coster. <laughs> Travis wasn't just some dumb freestyler like me, <laughs> <laughs> like me and Nolan and Joe. Some. Yeah, I'm he, dumb. I come for the crumbs. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't just some dumb freestyler who didn't have any options to get out other than his rhymes and his feelings. <laughs> that no. was a great internal rhyme, Nolan. Mm -hmm. All Thank of you. Nolan's rhymes are internal yeah. rhymes, dude. I, the guy speaks from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> so Travis wasn't just some dumb freestyler. He was a committed worker, reflecting the values his parents had instilled in him. A, quote, good boy of racing in a bad boy sport. <laughs> Travis was proving that nice guys could finish first. His manager was starting to see that, too. It really is funny when you watch those Krusty's tapes mm -hmm. where it is, like, all these dudes that are, like, kind of Is Brian Deegan they're, in it? I think so. Yeah, like, they're, like, With these hardcore-looking like, OC spikes. dudes. Yeah. But then they got Travis Pastrana, who has, like, his hair combed over <laughs> under his helmet somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like this young kid, like, what are we going to jump today, guys? And then he just does the biggest jump of the entire tape. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> dude, that's just proof that NAR brings people together. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. It doesn't matter how you dress, where you come from, whether it's the deserts of Orange County or the Annapolises of Maryland. <laughs> you can wear spikes or a Navy uniform. Or, or have a collared shirt. And you can if you shred... That's all you shred hard, then you're freaking cool in my book. 
With the 2000 Motocross Day Nations coming up, a.k.a. the Olympics of Motocross. Nice. DeCoster, <laughs> who captained Team USA, selected rookie Travis to join the team of seasoned professionals. Alongside 11-year Motocross veteran Ryan Hughes and the recent 250 class winner, Ricky Carmichael. Oh, oh, I remember that. Legends. Travis helped Team USA close out the podium on his RM125. Man, I want one of those bikes. You want a RM, little... Uh, specifically, RM125. Uh, the following year, at only 17, Travis became the youngest rider to win the 125 Supercross Championship, keeping up his streak of excellence. But in an attempt to win back-to-back -back motocross championships, Travis couldn't find the same rhythm. In 2001, riding again for Suzuki, Travis kept pace with his new competitors. South African-born Grant Langston and Mike Brown who, despite being born in the States, Mike Brown. cut his teeth racing internationally. But on the last lap of the mid-season race that would have seen Travis take a big points lead, he crashed and fell behind and lost out on some badly needed points. Some blamed Travis's bike for the decline, as the Suzuki looked deeply outmatched by its competition. But Travis realized his heart wasn't in the sport the same way it used to be. Working hard would only take him so far if he wasn't invested, and he wasn't having fun anymore. Travis felt himself pushing to the edge already, and it still wasn't enough to match his competitors. Despite hiring a trainer and working hard every day, getting into peak physical condition, Travis found himself getting slower and falling behind. He finished his 2001 motocross season in sixth overall, and he would never win another race in his career. Damn. Despite being in the best shape of his life, Travis struggled. He was torn between freestyle and motocross and dealing with near-constant injuries and sickness. He also began suffering from night terrors, which psychologists called repressed fear. Whoa. The episodes where Travis would stand up in the middle of the night screaming had his friends and family on edge and left Travis exhausted. <laughs> the All guy's right. job is so scary <laughs> yeah. that his brain is just like, not now, not now, not yeah. now, not, and pushes fear down. Yeah. And then when he's asleep and his brain can't control it anymore, it makes him go, ah! That's insane. <laughs> Holy crap. That's so sick. In the midst of these personal struggles, Travis would also make a mistake that would impact him for the rest of his life. He invested heavily in Beanie Babies. <laughs> he, he invested in Street Luge with me. <laughs> <laughs> Just after midnight on June 11, 2003, 19-year-old Travis took his acquaintance, Matt Bigos, on a drive in his Corvette, showing off his speed in the roads around his hometown. But a deer ran in front of the car and Travis spun out. Travis was thrown from the car and somehow survived. Jeez. Matt survived as well, but suffered a severe spinal injury that almost paralyzed him for the rest of his life. Travis's father was, naturally, furious and would visit Matt in the hospital instead of his son. Travis was furious with himself and felt the first Great Depression he had ever felt in his life. In the aftermath of his car accident, Travis spent more and more time with his family and particularly his cousin, Greg Powell. While Travis was recuperating, the two began filming each other on Travis's ranch doing any dumb dare that they could think of. Greg Godfrey, a filmmaker who had worked with Travis in the past, came out to visit with some of his friends and also hopped in on the dares. In that garage, Nitro Circus oh. was born. Nitro Circus was a chance for Travis to goof around with his friends at a time when he felt most alone. Travis's home in Maryland became the spot for athletes and daredevils alike to come and work on their next trick. Travis and his friends built huge ramps for them to jump off of, landing in foam pits and on crash pads. It was the fun Travis so desperately needed back in his life, and it seemed like other freestylers needed it too. Nate Adams, one of these young riders flocking to Nitro Circus, found a mentor in Travis. Unfortunately, Travis was too good at mentoring. Nate later beat him in the 2003 Gravity Games and the 2004 X Games, breaking Travis's freestyle streak. Hmm. The mentor becomes the mentee. Dude, I remember that one episode of Nitro Circus when Street Bike Tommy hit that ramp into the over the foam pit. I mean, that just shows you how much more powerful street bikes are. Because yeah, he barely blipped yeah. it, and he went, you know, 30 Flying feet past there, the yeah. foam pit. God. And then he's just going, uh, uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, For our younger listeners, if you've never watched 
Nitro Circus, go back. It's, it's wild. It's so crazy. Every every like ten minutes, there's like, oh my god, is yeah, he dead? Someone like almost <laughs> dies. Yeah. yeah, it's insane, dude. Travis loved innovating on freestyle, but he wanted to explore some new territory, something with a similar intensity to motocross, but less physically intense than riding a motorcycle all day. As Travis realized, with age, get a cage. That means a car. In 2003, at the age of 19, Travis set his sights on rally racing, joining Team Subaru and racing an Impreza WRX STI in the Rally America Series. And by 2006, he drove for Suzuki full-time along with co-driver Chris Edstrom. Having someone else in the car with him, Travis realized that his send-it-all mentality, or hock-it-all mentality, <laughs> would uh, have to be tempered. As Chris told Travis, quote, Look, I've got a wife and kids, too. <laughs> Travis came into the sport because he caught the rally car bug on a test drive in Europe. But lots of American drivers thought Travis was getting special advantages because of his background and the celebrity and the fact that he's, like, the coolest guy ever. Yeah, he's the coolest guy yeah. ever, and he's probably, like, really good for the sport, and his yeah. social following is probably bigger than the whole freaking sport combined. Yeah, but that's special treatment. But what his fellow drivers didn't realize is that this was Travis's new dream. Just like freestyle had eclipsed his love of motocross, rallying was a new apple of his eye, something to pour his whole heart into. Co-driver Edstrom recalls, quote, I think the other drivers saw pretty quickly that even in the first four or five months when we finished fourth in the rim of the World Valley, that one, Travis had talent, and two, he had a real passion for the sport. And I had a wife and kids, too. <laughs> Travis's participation in rally car was also a boon to the sport. Maybe it was coincidence, or maybe it was Travis's antics on the tracks, but rally cross became an X game sport after Travis's first season. So naturally, he drove his uh, WRX off a ramp into the Atlantic Ocean at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, he would go on to win gold in the inaugural rally cross X games in 2006. I think we've talked about this in our Colin McRae episode. That's the that's the episode where. He faced Travis in that final and rolled the mm. car. The, oh, no, yeah. the no fear. Yeah. Uh, gold oh, and then Subaru. kept going. Yeah. That was so sick. The 2006 X Games weren't done for 22-year-old Travis, however. And here we pick up from our teaser. The rumors of the double backflip began to fly after Travis's first run set him back to third place. Matt Rabot, who broke onto the freestyle scene the year before, sat in first place after landing two knack-knack underflips. I'm sorry, I don't have a description for that. While the young Blake Bilko Williams nailed a cliffhanger backflip and a heel kicker 360. So a cliffhanger backflip would be uh, like a Superman, but you're perpendicular to your bike. So you're only holding on to the handlebars and you're also doing a backflip. Nice. Whoa. Oh, cliffhanger is actually holding on to the back of the bike. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. And then a heel clicker 360, click your heels together. What's when you around. lean back with the handle with the your feet on the handlebars? That's called a relaxed daddy. Oh, that's a <laughs> coffin. That's a coffin? I think so. That was a crazy Ooh, I like relaxed daddy yeah. better. But a knack knack, it's the opposite of a can can because it's knack knack backwards. Oh, okay. Oh, duh. Um What's the one where you like hold on to the seat? That's a cliffhanger. Okay. Those are cool. Yeah. And then when you flip your little legs back when you're doing that, that's also cool. Yeah. Yeah. Even Nate Adams, the Nitro Circus attendee who had been beating Travis uh, even the year prior, was having trouble keeping up, sliding into fourth. Once Travis's first run landed him in third, he and the entire arena knew what would come next. The preparation for the double backflip took longer than anticipated as the grounds crew made sure the ramp was in the best place possible. But in the world of nitro physics... The philosophy Travis and Nitro Circus Gang lived by, where nothing is measured and everything is based on feel, there is no guarantee that any spot was the best spot. To them, riding is about gut, instinct, practice, and a deep commitment to what you say you will do, no matter how crazy it sounds. Like doing a potentially fatal trick in front of thousands of people, including your mother, while she's absolutely losing her mind. But Travis promised his mom that he could do it. And so he did. He made it look easy. The crowd erupted. History was made and Travis's career was validated. Reminiscing on that night, he said, 
It was the one moment as an athlete that it wasn't just me or my friends that understood it. It wasn't just that inner circle. For the first time, the whole world really understood what I felt. After Travis conquered the double backflip, he returned to focus on four wheels. He loved driving so much that he wanted to try out NASCAR. Travis drove the number 60 Roush Fenway Ford Mustang full-time in 2013, That's but never cool. found his footing in the Oval. His best finish was ninth. That's not too bad. Which is probably better than we could do, gosh darn yeah. it. <laughs> Man, this double backflip trick, though, I remember watching that live. Mm -hmm. uh, I think me and my dad were like in our living room, and just seeing him pull that off mm -hmm. was... Bananas. Like the sickest thing I'd Straight ever seen up in my life. Bananas. It's it's still an incredible clip. But also like eight year olds are doing double backflips now. I know, but nobody ever done it. People it takes like people to break those barriers before I know. people realize. I, I know that you know, I know. I'm saying it's for like the Rosa audience. Parks, dude. I don't know if it's exactly the same yeah. as that. But uh yeah, you gotta know that those barriers can be broken and that pushes the sport along. Mm -hmm. Um amazing. Travis's send it style was not conductive to what Travis called the thinking man's game. Of course, I'm talking about NASCAR, the thinking man's game. <laughs> His previous racing forays had always been effort-based. My bikes were always bent, broken. I didn't really care. My dad's like, man, you get good starts at the beginning of the year, but not the end of the year. Adjusting to not only a new ride, but a new way of thinking led to a lack of passion. And like his other pursuits before then, Travis's lack of passion ultimately led to the end of his NASCAR career. Hmm. Although Travis mostly stopped racing after his NASCAR days, he didn't stop innovating. Nitro Circus became a full-fledged phenomenon, airing on MTV alongside Jackass. Though the biggest difference between the two, in Travis's words, is that, quote, There's no genitalia in 3D, not unless <laughs> something goes really bad. What? That's a great quote. <laughs> With all the modern day comparisons of Pastrana to his childhood hero, Evil Knievel, Travis enlisted the Nitro Circus crew to help him recreate some of Evil's most famed stunts after he realized his own children didn't know who Evil was. So in 2018, Travis and the gang set out to replicate three of Evil's most well known stunts the 50 car leap, Jesus. the 14 bus leap, wow. and Evil's infamous failed jump of the fountain at Caesar's Palace. The goal was to honor evil while going bigger. An honor in and of itself. But according to Travis, quote, It would have been a letdown for Evil Knievel if 50 or 60 years later we're still doing the exact same stuff that he was doing. Also, Evil Knievel was on a freaking Harley. Yeah. Yeah. God. The Nitro Boys added two extra cars and two extra buses to the totals for the big factor but figured it would be cheating to jump on a lightweight oh, modern bike. There you go. Oh, my God. Instead, Travis opted to do the fountain jump the Evil Knievel way. He did all these jumps on a custom 340-pound V-twin engine Indian Scout FTR 750, reminiscent of the Harley Davidson that Evil was jumping half a century before. Yeah. Even on a bike 100 pounds heavier than what he was used to riding, Travis and the team pulled off the jumps, and Travis got to honor his childhood hero, saying, quote, It was such an honor to live a day in Evil's boots. His evil boots were greasy, but I liked them. Yummy, 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 yummy. yummy. I ate 11 hot dogs that day. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Evil Knievel. How many hot dogs do you think you could actually eat? Before I got sick? No, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, like before, without throwing up. Oh, 50? Uh. <laughs> Do I have to eat a bun? Uh, yeah, in in one hour. In an hour? Yeah. Oh man, fifty-five. I think I could do twelve, <laughs> probably. Twelve is a lot. Like, I could yeah. probably do ten. I was gonna six, say like ten, six, maybe. Because they're probably like l a little less than a quarter pound each. I've had a heart attack, <laughs> 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 so I think like once I started getting the hot dog nitrate sweats, I'd be like, eh, yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the nitrates help. The nit no nitroglycerins. <laughs> <laughs> My chest hurts. Give me a hot dog. <laughs> Give me some deli meat. <laughs> Although Travis's early NASCAR days weren't exactly what he had hoped for, 
He's returned to the Oval, driving for 2311 Racing, owned by Michael Jordan. And Denny Hamlin. And Denny Hamlin, but more importantly, Michael Jordan. <laughs> I'm not Bubba, wearing... Bubba's I'm, on that, too? I'm not wearing Hamlin yeah. ones right now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not wearing Dude, that. Dude, if they I'm made not, some freaking Hamlin FedEx Jordans. colored Jordans... Oh, I was going to say, like, ham colored. No, nah, that'd be sick. Come, ham cr- ham colored Jordans. Purple and orange yeah. Jordans. I, I would, would wear 100% those. catch you, you looking at those online Dude. being like, these are pretty sick. No yes, freaking Yes, way. come on. Come on. I saw you looking at much uglier shoes last week. I didn't bow and buy them. You were saying they were sick, though. Let me Too see flashy. that. Too bright. Too bright? Let's I'm not see. a bright. My shoes are all white. I would, I would wear those. I'm going to get the Union LA... Hamlin collabs. I was going to say a ham colored <laughs> Air Force One would be sick. Depends on the ham, I guess. Ham. <laughs> and they're always kind of like wet a little bit. J ones, not Air Force Ones. All right. All right. He made his Cup Series debut this past February in the Daytona 5 Honey after qualifying for one of four open slots in the number 67 Toyota Camry. He finished 11th in the pack ahead of six cup champions and his two 2311 racing teammates. He That's beat insane. Bubba Wallace. And Tyler Reddick, I believe. And Tyler Reddick. This is Reddick. He even led a few laps uh, after he accidentally missed a pit call. That's insane. Wow. Though Travis says he won't drive another Daytona 500, no one can know for sure, and no one knows what he may pull next. Hopefully it's being my best friend. But whatever Travis does decide to do, he'll take his fearlessness with him. In interviews, Travis always brings up his risk analysis. It's not the traditional kind you'd find in an office. To Travis, risk analysis is practicing a trick on a BMX bike first or flipping into a foam pit. But either way, the trick will be done. Fear occupies an interesting place in Travis's life. As he says, for me, scared doesn't come during the stunt. Scared comes the moment when you decide to do it. Okay. It's not when he's jumping out of the plane with no parachute, which he did in Puerto Rico in 2011. That was insane. That was crazy. It's the moment that he realized that he wants to do it. Stepping back to his childhood, his father always told him to be a man of his word, no matter what his word was. Travis takes that to the extreme. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
fixes dogs on the battlefield? A war vet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> burk, nice. burk, homie. Burk, 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 burk. <laughs> but my dog says, Kirk, 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 Kirk. She's a crip. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk, homie. Great, great episode. Great story. Uh, we got some listener mail this week. <laughs> this is from Mark in Eagle, Wisconsin. All right, so Eagle. Mark is Mark's refing um, another listener yeah. mail sent in by a, uh, a listener named Nick. Yeah, so Nick, he said, uh, Mark says, while Nick provided a lot of scientific reasoning for why cheese curd mm, oh squeak, he made one mistake. In your face, Nick, Mark's about to pwn you. He said, preferably you should eat Culver's cheese curds. Uh, while delicious and superior to a and in every way, uh-huh. Culver's cheese curds are also fried and therefore don't squeak. Yep. I would recommend Cheese Brothers. They're based in Barron, Wisconsin. We'll ship anywhere in the world. Mm, okay. <laughs> We're anywhere in the world. That's hey, cool. We're there. I'm, the, I'm out of this world. Their, their <laughs> website even mentions of the squeak. Does Mark work for Barron's? Yeah. Is this a plug? Is Barron giving us Bar- money? All right. Look, Barron is the town. Okay. It's Cheese Brothers. Uh, oh, Cheese Brothers. Cheese Brothers. Cheese Brothers. Yeah. Right, right, right. And he says, if Nolan is going to attempt to correct his misstep, he should do it right. Well, I guess we just gave right. Cheese Brothers che- a free yeah. plug. Cheese Brothers, if you're listening to this, send Cheese us some Brothers. curds, oh, dog. They're, they're Western Wisconsin. That's oh. why I didn't, I've never heard of Barron before. Oh, turns Uh-oh. out you don't even know about Wisconsin. Oh, it's by Menominee. I've been there. Oh, Menominee. Oh, boop, by Menominee. Boop, doo, doo, doo. Dude, sometimes I start boop, playing boop, boop, Menominee, and then it's like so long. And then my sister cheats at it. Cheese curds. What is, it? what is this joke? Monopoly. Monopoly. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and listening to this podcast. If you're listening right now and you want to see what we look like and maybe get a little extra sauce on these bits and stories, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we are showing videos of these. We're recording Donut them. podcasts. We Donut podcasts on YouTube. Uh, tell your friends about the podcast if you like it. Best way to spread the word is word of mouth because then that's how we became the number one automotive podcast in the world. Number 60 comedy podcast. I'd like to crack top 50 comedy and then who knows? Maybe try and crack top 50 sometime. Maybe try and crack top 50 sometime. Maybe try and crack oh top 10 sometime. My mouth and is then- literally watering looking at these cheese Dude, I, can't, I can't wait i can't wait follow no one is squeaking right now follow us on social media at donut media follow nolan at nolan j sykes follow joe at uh joe g weber follow me at james pumphrey go to donutmedia.com or zoomies now uh, and get yourself some oh, yeah. donut apparel and accessories. We were able to do that because of all the support from listeners and watchers, viewers like you guys. What a dream. Um, all right. I love you. Bye.